Perfume House Review by Moody Boo Reviews. I don't know. Maybe I got some alien DNA in me or something and I just spray it on. I <laughs> sucks up all of those notes and I never get to experience them. Don't know. But until Mulder and Scully show up at my door to take me to the FBI headquarters, I'm going to assume I'm full blood human and I don't get it. Hi everyone, I'm Moody Boo and I am back with another house review and this is on the house of Guerlain. So um, I'm not going to talk much about their two biggest ones, I think. Well, no, I guess Shalimar is like one of their big ones. But I'm not going to talk about Spiritus uh, Duble Veni or Tonka Imperial. They've been talked to death. I think I've done some reviews on them years ago. And uh, yeah, so one is a beautiful vanilla, um, benzoin incense-y kind of a perfume. The other one's a beautiful tonka, almondy, sweet kind of a perfume. Um, I prefer tonka imperial over spiritus, but I do love spiritus. I really do, I appreciate it for what it is. Um, and Tonka Imperial is pretty crazy good. But like I said, they've been talked to death. So I figured I'd talk about the rest of them. So, and I'm not going to talk about Angelique Noir. I have done a review on it years ago. It's just this beautiful vanilla, angelica, fruity kind of a perfume. Gorgeous, gorgeous perfume. Um, that was a slow burner for me, actually. Well, I call it, say slow burner. It took a couple weeks, but... Um, anyway, great performers, all three of them, but again, I've talked about all of them, so I don't feel the need to rehash old news. Great perfumes, but old news. Uh, next, depending on how long I babble, um, is going to dictate whether or not this will be a part one. Because <laughs> you know what happens when I get to talking. No, no, no. So, um... I'm just going to touch on my two Elixir Carnal um, perfumes. One is Gourmand Coquin and the other one's French Kiss. Um, I have done a review on both, I think. Yes, one was years ago. I was not impressed with Gourmand Coquin at first. The performance I thought was exceptionally poor. And it was a, you know, retail place where I got the bottle. But then somebody sent me, and so I got rid of that bottle. I was pissed off. I was like, you know, F you, Gourmand Coquin, you're out of here. So I traded off or sold it or something. And then somebody sent me years later, this was like two years ago, somebody sent me a decant or a sample of Gourmand Coquin in with a purchase. And I thought, yeah, I've been there, sniffed that, was not impressed. But I thought, you know, things change. You evolve. You have new life experiences. You have different things that um, change your taste in perfume um, over the course of sometimes months, let alone years. So I thought, okay, z -dotes, I'm going to do it. And I tried it and I was like, what was my problem with this? <laughs> what was that again? <laughs> I couldn't remember. And then I remembered I went and watched my old video and I was like, okay, yeah, it was performance, but this one performed well. Not great, but well. And so I went and bought another bottle. But crazy thing is, they're not even really labeled. So I even looked on the bottom, they're identical on the bottom. So the only way to tell them, and the juice is the same color pretty much. So you have to sniff them to know which one's French Kiss and which one's Gourmand Coquin. Yeah, that's French Kiss. And French Kissed is kissed. Um, French Kiss is a very makeup-y 
kind of a, a perfume to me. That's what I get is a true makeup vibe. Really nice makeup and some hand lotion or something in there as well. So let me tell you what's in it. French Kiss is raspberry, violet, lychee, some heliotrope, some other florals, vanilla, orris root, some musk. But I think it's the violet and the heliotrope. I It, it seems like I get a makeup -y vibe with either one or both of those perfumes fairly often. And it's not my favorite thing. I, yeah, blind bought French Kiss. Hell, with a name like French Kiss, it being uh, Guerlain, one of the elixir, I, I was like, it's a no-brainer. Of course I will. And then I was like, what the hell did I just do? <laughs> I'm not, I'm still not impressed. It's powdery, it's sweet, it's very lotion, hand lotion, makeup-y kind of a smell. Not a big trajectory on this. It just, it kind of stays in that same sweet makeup, la 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 la, kind of a zone. Real kind of yawn fest. Nothing to write home about. Performance is okay. It's about the same as uh, uh, Gourmand Coquin. So I just, it didn't rock my world. At first I was like, oh yeah, I really like it. And I got tired of it in two seconds. I was over it. <laughs> and I've come back to it several times to try to, you know, see, oh, if I changed my mind, you know, do I like Brussels sprouts now? Um, am I willing to eat liver now? And the answer is still no. And no. So, disappointment, a very expensive one. But I don't hate it. Not by any means. But it's just not for me. It's it's unisex. You know, any any masculine personality that would appreciate and appreciates those kind of makeup-y perfumes would really like it. Seriously. So, and Gourmand Coquin is some chocolatey notes and boozy notes, some vanilla, some spicy notes, a little bit of florals in there. And honestly, to me, you know, I've heard other people describe it as chocolate-covered cherries. I... There have been times when I've smelled it that I get that. It's not nearly as syrupy or decadent as that, not even. It's very watery compared to a chocolate-covered cherry um, because those are so sweet and thick and just almost too much. I think I can eat, I think my record is two chocolate-covered cherries in one sitting, and that was it. It was way too rich. This is not that. If this was that, I'd be all in. Feet first, head first, did, butt first, it didn't matter. I would be jumping into that pool and doing the backstroke all day long. But alas, this is not that. And I don't even really get a lot of boozy. It's kind of a, a milk chocolate, uh, floral milk chocolate. That's kind of what I get. It's, um, I love it, but it doesn't wow me. It, it will wow me for a second. And then I'm like, well, hmm, not sure if I'm wowed, not compared to what is out there now. That wows me. This makes me go, well, <laughs> Not sure anymore. Tastes change. People change. Everything changes. So I don't know. I I like it a lot and I love it sometimes and then I'm like mm -hmm, I don't know. So performance is okay on it. About the same as French Kiss. It's not you know when I say okay it's like six, seven hours. I know other people have said they're beastly. It's huge. I haven't gotten that. I don't know. I just don't get a lot of that. I don't get that chocolate covered cherry. I just don't. 
I don't know, maybe I got some alien DNA in me or something and I just spray it on. I <laughs> sucks up all of those notes and I never get to experience them. Don't know. But until Mulder and Scully show up at my door to take me to the FBI headquarters, I'm going to assume I'm full blood human and I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get the, the huge gourmandy kind of a thing. It actually has a little makeup vibe to me too. A little bit. So, next. So, one I haven't heard a lot about, and it was a new, a rediscovery for me, because I've had it years. Les Voyages Olfactives. Um, and this one is Paris to Moscow. I adore this. I adored it when I first got it. So again, it got a little lost in the other perfumes. And that's one of the things I love is rediscovering perfumes that I haven't touched in years. And I haven't touched this one. I do like the bottle. I think it's kind of cool. Nothing spectacular, but the perfume. Oh, it's Tonka and Red Courant and vanilla and plum and there's some pine needles and some other woody notes some florals some musk some citrus but you know what i honestly i get i get a little fig or something in there it smells very figgy to me green fig and i don't know if it's the tonka and the red currant and the plums mixed together are creating a fig note? I don't know. But I get a green, woody, very foresty fig. I love this stuff. Love. This is going to go on the shelf because this is going to go into my uh, spring, summer. Oh, wait, it's summer. My summer rotation. Because this stuff is beautiful. Now, I like I said, I rediscovered it. Performance isn't great. It's about uh, six hours, I'd say, on it. But it's almost a freshie. I know it says it's Tonka and there's some red currant and stuff in there. But to me, it really is a green, fresh forest perfume. I adore it. It's got some sweetness in there. Must be from the red currant and the tonka and some of the other notes, but the vanilla is not heavy to me. Some people on Fragrantica have put it as one of the top three dominant notes, and I disagree a lot. This that makes it sound very the tonka, the red currant, and the vanilla as the three top notes. I disagree with that. I think some of the woody notes, some of the citruses, some of the red currant, yes, definitely. But it's and all of the, the woody foresty notes, most definitely. It's beautiful. It is beautiful, but I swear, I don't know, maybe Fragrantica's wrong. Maybe, maybe that I should look on Guerlain's website. Because oh, I swear there's fig in there. It's so pretty. I really adore it. Well, I can see that I am really getting close to needing to cut this off and do a part two. Gorgeous stuff. This stuff is really unisex too. And I never hear anybody talk about it. It's beautiful stuff. Everybody's so caught up on Spiritus and Tonka and Periel that they forget Guerlain has some other beauties in there. I don't even know if they sell this one anymore. I think they do. I'm not sure. My husband's going to be home any second. <laughs> and he always feels so bad when he interrupts me. And I'm like, I don't give a shit. Get your ass in here. You know, I think I'm going to cut it off there. I got uh, all of those done here. And I'm going to go ahead and cut it off and do, and do my Aqua Allegoria um, another time. I'll talk about the other ones in a part two. That way this one won't run so long. So, okay, yeah. Did I get everything? I think I did. I know, I just kind of touched upon them. That's the problem with the house review. I don't want the video to get too long, so I only spend a few minutes with each perfume. So if you have more questions or if you want me to go more in depth into one of the perfumes in any house review, all you got to do is ask me, and I'll do what I can. And uh, um, 
anyway, yay. So thank you for being here. I appreciate all of you. And don't forget to like and subscribe and ding, ding, ding the bell if you want. If you don't, it's all good. <laughs> I still love you. All right. See you later, everybody. Use your own nose. Peace.